Hello, it's Reverend Tony here. It's great that you can join me today for another collective worship. I expect you can see what I'm doing. I'm drawing round my hands. I'll tell you a bit more about that in just a moment. But first of all, we'll have our opening responses as usual. God is love all the time, all the time. God is love. There we are, you can see my picture drawn round my hands with felt pens. I want to show you another picture now and see what you think about this. I wonder what you think that's all about. I think for me it's a terrible picture because it shows signs of hatred, signs of violence, signs of horrible things going on. And that picture is part of a poster for White Ribbon Day. Don't know whether you've heard of that at all, but it's about Stopping violence against women and children. Here's another picture, which is a much nicer picture. This picture reminds us that hands are not for hurting. And that's what I want us to think about today, because it's a terrible truth that there is a lot of violence that goes on and a lot of abuse that goes on, particularly directed to women and girls. It's true that men and boys also suffer from violence and abuse, but it's even worse for women. And so White Ribbon Day is about helping people to think about how we use our hands and using our hands only for good. Hands are not for hurting. And all of us have a part to play in that. Those of us who are men and boys have a part to play to realise our responsibility, that we treat other people always well and that we don't use violence, and especially that we don't use violence against girls or women. And it's also got a lesson for girls and women today as well, not to stand for abuse or violence, but to resist it, not necessarily physically, but by telling someone about it so that someone can do something about it. I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible about Jesus and how he responded to people because he never used violence against anyone. This is a shocking story from the Bible about what some men wanted to do to a woman. These men were religious leaders and they found a woman who had done something wrong and they grabbed her and they dragged her in front of Jesus. And they said to Jesus, according to the law of Moses, we're allowed to stone this woman to death because of what she's done. What do you think? Stoning to death was a particularly horrible and cruel way to die. They weren't just nice stones that people would throw. They would be great big rocks like this that they would throw at someone until they died. A terrible story in the Bible. And what did Jesus do? He didn't say anything at first, but he bent down and with his finger he wrote something on the ground. No one knows what it was that he wrote. When he had finished writing, he looked up at the men and said, those of you who've not done anything wrong can throw the first stone. And he went back to writing on the ground again with his finger. And gradually, one by one, the men drifted away because they knew that all of them had done something wrong and they came to realise that it was wrong to be violent towards this woman. 
When Jesus looked up again, he saw that everyone had gone away. So he said to the woman, does no one condemn you? Then I don't condemn you either. Go on your way and don't do wrong again. Jesus shows that it is totally wrong to commit violence against anyone and certainly against women and girls. Go back to our hands. Here we are, I've got these lovely hands here and I'm going to uh, write some kind words on them because hands are not for hurting. And I just happened to notice, I don't know whether you noticed that, but when I was writing on here, I got some red of the felt pen on my hands. There, you can see that there. And that reminds me, the red, of blood. And it reminds me of how Jesus used his hands. We're going to have a song now. You can't sing it, but you can look at the words and look at the pictures. A song that tells us about Jesus and about his love and his dying for us. And in particular, there's one verse that says these words. Come see his hands and his feet. Scars that speak of sacrifice. Hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered. Jesus' hands were marked with nails because people were cruel to him and they killed him on a cross. But Christians believe that's not the end. Christians believe that Jesus came back to life and lives again. Christians believe that we should follow the example of Jesus who the Bible describes as the servant king, the one who came to serve us. Oh, yeah. 
So instead of having our hands bunched up, hands of hatred and aggression, it's good for us to have open hands, hands that love. You know, write some words on these hands just to remind me that hands are not for hurting, hands are for loving. Loving. Kind. Caring. Giving. Open. Generous, gentle, soothing, there we are, those are some of the words that I've thought of, generous, loving, soothing, caring, open, gentle, kind, giving. I wonder what words you can think of that describe how our hands can be used to help people rather than to damage or harm people. Well, I hope today's collective worship has made us think a bit, think a bit about how we live our lives, think a bit about the example of Jesus. And I'm going to say a prayer now, a prayer for us and a prayer for other people. Put your hands in a safe place. And I'll say this prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your love for each one of us. We thank you that every person is special to you, from the youngest to the oldest. Men and women, girls and boys, we're all loved by you and all are special. Help us to make sure that we don't use our hands to hurt other people. Help us only to do things that are kind and good and caring. And we pray for your help for anyone who has been attacked or hurt or harmed in any way. Help them to find someone that they can talk to and help them so that that never happens again. So be with us through today and through the coming week and help us to know your love always with us. Amen. And we finish with our closing responses. God is love all the time. All the time, God is love. Go and show that love to everyone you meet. Amen. Well, it's great to have been with you for our collective worship today. I'll be back again next week. And next week we will be remembering Advent and the beginning of December. And we'll be thinking about Advent calendars and all that Advent can bring. I look forward to seeing you again next time.